Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video and I hope that you guys are excited too. I mean you clicked on this video so I hope you want to watch it. So right now I am standing in my reptile room that I like to call my lizard lounge. Last week I posted a complete reptile room tour video where I took you around this room and I showed you everything that was inside of it. But since that video was a room tour, I didn't take the time to show you every single animal that lives in this room and introduce them to you. So today we are going to be taking a look at all of the animals that live in my lizard lounge. Now since this room here is called the lizard lounge, I'm sure that you can guess that there's going to be a lot of lizards in here. In fact, this room is basically all lizards with a few amphibians. Now for those of you who are familiar with me and my channel, you probably know that I have about 50 pets total. I have a total of three animal rooms in this house, so they are not all in this room. So with that said, today we are just going to be meeting the animals that live here in my lizard lounge, but don't worry, there will be plenty of videos coming in the future that will show all of the other animals as well, and I will also just be sure to do another meet all of my pets video and include them all in one video. So before we go ahead and meet the 30 animals that live in my lizard room here, I want to say a quick little disclaimer. I own a lot of animals and you are going to see a lot of animals featured in this video today. Owning as many animals as I do is a massive responsibility. It is super time consuming, it's expensive, it can be stressful at times. So please don't think that owning a ton of animals is super easy. This video is not meant to encourage anyone to go out and and buy any pets as getting a pet is a huge responsibility and is something that you should make sure you think about a lot before you do it. So please, if you are thinking of getting a pet, just make sure that you are doing lots of research, making sure it's the right fit for you, and just overall be a responsible pet owner. So without further ado, let's go ahead and meet the animals that live here in my lizard lounge. So this gecko right here is Derek, and Derek is my gargoyle gecko. Now, despite being named Derek, Derek is actually a female. So I got Derek a couple years ago and when I got Derek she was a teeny tiny little hatchling. She was like three grams when I first got her. So because Derek was so young and so small, I had no idea if Derek was a male or female. So I just went ahead and named them Derek and then Derek turned out to be a girl. But thankfully, gargoyle geckos do not care what their name is. So um, this is still Derek. I have been trying for so long to get Avery here to sit still. So I hope that she is, she's done running because that took a while. So this here is Avery, and Avery is my mainland Chihuahua gecko. Sometimes Chihuahua geckos are also known as the mossy prehensile tail gecko, but I don't know, I always just say Chihuahua gecko. Chihuahua geckos are another species of gecko that come from New Caledonia, similar to crested geckos, gargoyle geckos, and Lichianus geckos. Chihuahua geckos aren't like rare by any means, but I think that they are definitely an underrated gecko. If you are someone who likes crested geckos or gargoyle geckos, I highly encourage you to look into Chihuahua geckos because I love them. I think they're great and I think that you will also think that they're great. So so don't, don't overlook the Chihuahua geckos. They're great. They're fantastic. Avery here is just an absolutely wonderful gecko and she really always has been. I got her as a teeny teeny tiny little baby and she's never given me any trouble. She's always been easy to handle so uh, Avery is definitely a 10 out of 10 gecko and Avery also needs a boyfriend. So this enclosure right here is my absolute favorite enclosure that is in my lizard lounge here and it is home to my pair of Dendrobates tinctorius azurius. So these are my two poison dart frogs and I am absolutely obsessed with them. I made the choice to get poison dart frogs just a few months ago back in the summer and I am so happy that I did. I knew that I would love these frogs but I I honestly did not know just how much I would love them. Owning these guys has 
definitely made me fall very, very, very in love with dart frogs, and I definitely see more in my future. My favorite thing about these guys definitely just has to be how active and how bold they are, and obviously they're such a beautiful color as well, which just really makes them visible in the enclosure here. There are times where I just come in my lizard lounge and I just stare at this enclosure for way longer than I would like to admit. So these might be the only dark frogs in the lizard lounge for now, but it definitely is not gonna stay that way. And now next up, we have this handsome little guy named Yoshi. So Yoshi here is a crested gecko who I got earlier this year, and Yoshi is just one of the sweetest animals that I have. Literally ever since the day that I got him, he has just been such a chill gecko. He's so easy to handle, which is just fantastic. Not that Cresties tend to be overly difficult to handle, but out of all four of my Cresties, I think that he's probably the easiest to handle. So Yoshi is not big enough yet, but in the future he will be a breeder of mine. So hopefully Yoshi's babies end up uh, as great as he is. You are a pretty great gecko, did you know that Yoshi? Crested geckos are super popular in the pet trade, and I think that is for a very good reason. They are such amazing geckos. I just, I love them. They're adorable. They're great. 10 out of 10 geckos. And now, speaking of 10 out of 10 geckos, let's go ahead and meet my other two crested geckos. All right, so uh, right here we have little baby no name. So this here is a baby crested gecko who I got a couple months ago, and I'm sure as you could have guessed by now, she uh, does not have a name yet. I am just the worst when it comes to naming my animals. I swear, sometimes I get an animal and I have a name ready for them right away, and other times it just takes me so long before the right name comes to me. So if you want to comment some name suggestions then uh, please feel free to. So same as Yoshi, the plan is that this little gecko right here will be a future breeder of mine. So now she still is really young but so far she is looking to be a female which I really hope she is because right now I have all male crusties so uh, she's my only hope at a female so uh, really really hope that she uh, turns out to be a female but I guess only time will tell so I don't know come back in a year and I'll let you know so this is what she looks like right now at six grams so I really really love how she looks I think that she is a really really beautiful gecko and I'm just so excited to see what she looks like when she gets older because both of her parents were absolutely beautiful geckos, so hopefully she will take after them. So poking his head out of this cork round here is Dorito, who is, uh, as you can guess, one of my crested geckos. Out of every animal I currently have, Dorito was actually the first reptile that I got. And Dorito has just been such a great gecko ever since. He's been very, very good. Like all my other Cresties, 10 out of 10 gecko. So this here is Finn, and Finn is a super cool species of chameleon called a Triocerus montium. The common name for them is the Cameroon sailfin chameleon. This is not really a species that you see in captivity hardly at all, but I think that they are just so gorgeous. I mean, like, his colors are beautiful, his horns, I don't know, he's just a very gorgeous animal. I've had Finn for just over two years now, and he has such a big personality. He's definitely a grump, but he is one of my most food-motivated animals that I have. Feeding him is so much fun. So this little cutie right here is Fern, and Fern is one of my African fat tail geckos. So Fern here was actually a rescue of mine, and I guess you can't really see it on camera very well, but her growth was very stunted. So she is a very, very small African fat tail gecko, and she does also have some sort of neurological problems, which I have seen is actually somewhat common in her morph here, which is the Oreo whiteout African fat tail gecko. However, from what I've seen, these problems only tend to be present in the 
American lines of these geckos and not in the European lines. So that's something to keep in mind if you are interested in African fat tail geckos or specifically a whiteout Oreo morph. She is just an absolute sweetheart though. I think that African fat tail geckos are just such amazing geckos. I really, really, really love them. So right down in this enclosure here, we have my leopard gecko Pepper. I don't know if you can see her there, but she, oh, there she is. See, she just woke up. She's just sleeping with her head in between the uh, hide and that rock there. Sorry about the glare. I guess I should like open the glass. So similar to Fern, Pepper here was a rescue of mine and she does also have some neurological problems. Pepper here is about 11 years old. Pepper is just such a sweet gecko. She's, she's so precious. I adore her. So this here is Neptune and this here is Pluto. And these two little guys right here are my male chameleon geckos. So these guys here are both Eurodactylodes viardi and oh my goodness, I have said it so many times before, but I think that chameleon geckos are just such an underrated species of gecko. They are so incredible and like, I am not joking when I say they are one of my favorite species to keep as a pet. Pluto here is a full grown male gecko. This is how big they get. Now the females do get a bit bigger than the males, but overall they are very small geckos. So as of right now, I do have two males and one female, but I am really hoping to get another female in the near future as I would love to have two separate breeding pairs. This is just a species that I absolutely adore and I'm so excited to start working with them. See that little head right there? That adorable little face? That adorable little face there would belong to Venus, who is my female Eurodactylodes viardi. So I already introduced you to Pluto and Neptune, who are my two males. So yeah, here's Venus, who's my female. So Venus here is going to be paired with Pluto very soon. So she is currently 17 months old, and typically you want to wait until they're about 18 months to pair them. So. Next month, she's going to be moving out of this enclosure here and moving in with Pluto, and hopefully in the future, we'll have some little baby chameleon geckos. And now I would like to introduce you to some of the coolest animals that I have in my lizard lounge here, and they would be my Malaysian cat geckos. So now these two beautiful girls right here are Sage and Sadie. So Sage here is the darker one, and Sadie is the lighter one. And now I do want to point out that Sage right now is looking quite a bit chunkier than Sadie is, and that is because Sage currently has eggs developing inside of her, and Sadie here just laid eggs a few days ago. So Sage is full of eggs, and Sadie here is a little bit deflated from just laying. Now, I am also very sad to say that I do unfortunately have a bit of bad news, and that is that my male Malaysian cat gecko Slinky passed away just about a month ago. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the details because I did post about it over on my Instagram account. So if you are curious about what happened, then uh, head on over to my Instagram account and you can find out there. And now, obviously it sucks to lose any pet no matter what, but it was especially unfortunate to lose Slinky because I am breeding Malaysian cat geckos and he, as of right now, was my only adult male. So now I just have the two females, but I do also still have a bunch of babies and I'm definitely going to be searching for some more males. So as of right now, I have a total of nine baby Malaysian cat geckos. Now I'm not gonna lie, it does feel like it would be a little bit pointless to go and do an introduction for every single one of the babies. So instead, we're just gonna do a baby cat gecko montage. So uh, enjoy.
Hello, Mark. Hello. Hello, how are you? So this here is Mark, and Mark is my standings day gecko. Out of all of the animals I currently own, Mark here is one of the ones that I've had for the longest. I got Mark when I was 17 and just starting to get into pet keeping, and I have loved Mark ever since then. He's just been such a fun little gecko to own. I, I love getting to see him hanging out every day. Just doing Mark things, you know? Just Mark things. So this enclosure here is where my Lichianus gecko lives, and I think it's uh, definitely due for a trim. The plants here are really, really getting full. Now my leech is kind of hidden away, way in the back, so I think I'm gonna go grab my tripod so then I can uh, set my camera up while I look for her. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this cork round. Okay, well she is like way back there. That is her uh, her patterns right there. You can kind of see her feet, her foot. Yeah, this is really great, really great footage. I know that this is all exactly what you came for, but uh, this is chaos. And now I'm not gonna lie, she's not a super nice gecko and I don't really want to disturb her. So uh, sorry about this really, really, really good footage, but this is chaos. Now please allow me the honor of introducing you to Ferb. So this here is Ferb, and Ferb is what you would call a Madagascar rain frog. Now even though Ferb is just sitting in the corner doing nothing right now, Ferb is actually quite the active frog. Very often I'll just see him moving around, hopping around, you know, just doing your typical, typical frog things. For those who are curious, this is what Ferb looks like on my hand. Ferb is very small. He's a small frog boy. But you know what? We love a small frog king. We love it. And you know, speaking of small frog kings, we uh, absolutely cannot forget Sandwich here. So Sandwich here is my chubby frog, and Sandwich, just like Ferb, is um, absolutely incredible. I, I would die for Sandwich, and I hope that all of you would as well, because Sandwich deserves it all. And while we're uh, talking about amphibians here, please allow me to introduce you to my Oida salamanders. So as you can see, there is uh, just one salamander here in front of us, but I do actually have a total of three salamanders in this enclosure. They do just tend to burrow and, you know, there's one out right now, I don't feel like I need to dig up the other two because if I'm being honest, they uh, pretty much all look the same. So just imagine this times three, and then wow, there's three salamanders. And in addition to my three adult Oida salamanders, I actually have two babies as well. Uh, once again, you can see one of them here, and the other one is just burrowed away somewhere, and it looks like this one is about to be burrowed away also. So uh, I guess we'll just, we'll let him do that. We'll say goodbye. All right, <laughs> goodbye salamander. Now this is an animal that I am very excited to introduce you to as none of you have ever met this little guy before. So this here is a baby mountain horn dragon. And now unfortunately I do not have a name to share with you guys today. So this little guy right here actually belongs to my boyfriend Josh and Josh has uh, just not yet come up with a name for him. I mean, uh, I get it, I take a long time to come up with names too, but if you guys want, feel free to leave some name suggestions for these. I'm sure that Josh will look through them, so uh, if you have any name suggestions for this little cutie right here, then uh, feel free to let us know. But oh my goodness, I just seriously cannot get over how adorable they are. Like, just look at this little face, oh my goodness, it's so cute. He's just so cute and I'm so excited to watch him grow and get nice and big because He's definitely not gonna stay this tiny, I uh, can guarantee you that. So right in this enclosure right here are my two Sparadactylus sputators, and they're actually both out right now, which uh, is not super common. So we have this one right here on the leaf, and then the other one is hanging out on this branch back here. This one's a bit harder to see, but Hopefully, hopefully you can see see the gecko there. So this is a species of micro gecko. This enclosure here is literally just 
8 by 8 by 12 so these are a super tiny species of gecko but they're honestly really fun to own and they're so fun to watch eat they're like tiny little monitors when they hunt it's so cute so this enclosure up here belongs to my thacodactylus oscrobipronorium that's that's it if you're wondering how it's spelled i'm probably pronouncing it wrong but there it is and these guys can uh, commonly be known as the St. Martin's turnip tail gecko. So Bean is currently hiding inside of one of her cork tubes, so we're probably not really going to see her. So uh, I'm just going to show you her enclosure and then I'll like insert a photo of her or something because I really don't want to stress her out to get her out because she is even flightier than a day gecko is and drops her tail very easily. So we're just, we're gonna let her do her thing. And now right here we have one of my baby emerald tree skinks. Now there is two in this enclosure and you can actually see them both, but uh, one's a little bit harder to see than the other. So one is back there and then one is right up there. So I got my emerald tree skinks back in August from my good friend Natasha from Red's Faunaverse here on YouTube. We actually did a collab video together because we are basically trading baby animals. She gave me some of her baby tree skinks and I'm going to be giving her one of my baby cat geckos once they are big enough to ship. So I've had these guys for about two months now and oh my goodness, I am obsessed with them. These are such a fun species to own and they are so incredibly intelligent. I know a lot of people have really fallen in love with emerald tree skinks lately and it is definitely for a good reason. They are incredible reptiles. And now last up here is Bert who is my Vietnamese mossy frog and now he is completely hiding away on the background so I'm going to go ahead and take him out quickly. So this here is Bert and uh, like I mentioned he is my Vietnamese mossy frog and I'm sure you can understand why they are called that just by looking at them. These frogs uh, look a lot like moss, that is, that's for sure. So I've had Bert here for over a year and I won't lie, he did give me some challenges. Bert had a nose infection for quite some time, but thankfully with some vet care and some treatment that all cleared up and now Bert is a happy and healthy frog and he just gets to spend his time in this nice uh, paludarium here. So there we go. There's Bert. And there we go. So those are all of the animals that are currently living here in my lizard lounge. I really hope that you guys enjoyed getting to see and meet all of the animals here in my lizard lounge. Like I mentioned earlier, these are not my only pets. I still have two other pet rooms in the house. So not only is there going to be more content on my lizard lounge, but there's also going to be a bunch more content on my other pet rooms coming soon. So with all that said and done, I am going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Like I said, I have so much more fun animal content coming soon, so you don't want to miss that. Also be sure to check out all of my social media. It will all be down in the description below, but it is pretty much all just MSM99. I would love to have you guys over there, so make sure you check that out if you want to. And now once again, before I end this video, I do just want to remind you all that Owning this many animals is a huge responsibility and it is not something to be taken lightly. So if you are interested in getting into pet keeping, just please make sure that you are doing lots of research and preparing yourself beforehand. With all that said and done, I'm going to go ahead and end this video now. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Mm -hmm.